Welcome back to the channel. I see a lot of questions asking what the dynamic campaign is and why is it so special. I will explain that to you in this video. If you are new to the channel, I create tutorial videos and tactical missions of Falcon BMS, explaining BVR tactics, how to be a good wingman, and much more. Check out my other videos on the channel. I have plenty of them. Long story short, the dynamic campaign of Falcon BMS is an ongoing war with simulations of battles and conflicts where supplies, power grids, ammunition, cargo distribution, and individual units all matter during the war. You as a human is only one part of that war. In the meantime, there are other vehicles, tanks, supply trucks, repair battalions, and even aircraft ready to scramble because incoming aircraft are spotted on the early warning radar. Flights and vehicles are automatically moved and utilized by HQ to include tankers, reconnaissance, rescue, AWACS, electronic intel, ships, and much more. HQ even creates missions where you could use it to place you directly in the war really quick. On the other hand, you can remove HQ control from your aircraft squadron, making it human controlled and all flights will be manually created. Usually a server has a few squadrons that are human controlled, but all of the other squadrons are controlled by HQ, so there will be friendlies up there with you as well. The HQ controls the adversary as well, always planning for your attack, so every mission will be different. So the dynamic campaign of BMS, we have many theaters when it comes to basically maps. There are theaters like Korea, like this one here. There's Balkans, which is in Italy. And then there is Israel, which is in Israel, co covers Israel and Syria. Those are the three ones that are most supported in BMS. But in this case, I'll be using the Korea as an example. So you have your campaign here. There are challenge ratings. You can click on that. You can make it more difficult being that the force ratios all the way to the left, more ratio for the North Korea. On the right, more force ratio for South Korea. I'll go to Recruit, it'll swap back over there. Go to Rookie, it's right in the middle. I'm gonna go to Ace, it's gonna be difficult. Difficulty level is easy, relatively easy, because that they're pushed up real high. If you go to a rolling fire, they'll come down here. Difficulty is, le is medium. Iron Fortress, they start going down. Some of these, China gets into the mix, so you might see a J-20 or two. Also, some of the 5th Gen fighters on the Russia side, so make sure you know what you're doing when you're in the campaign. Bear Trap is another good one that everyone likes. There's SA-10s, SA-17s, they're literally all over the place. But for this, I'll be using Rolling Fire. You can choose what aircraft you want to fly. In this case, I want to fly an F-16, but if you want to fly a different aircraft, you can fly an A-10 if you want. would not recommend, but you can fly it. Go to this side, the F5. Right here you can fly a F16 Block 32. But for this case, I'll be using the Block 40 36 Fighter Squadron. I'll press commit. Once you press commit, it gives you this box here. It gives you the option to let HQ set all of these. But what these are are priorities when it comes to aircraft, airfields, air defenses. All the way to the right is more priority, all the way to the left is less priority. So air defenses, you want to target more air defenses, or do you want to target less airfields, and that's this page. I'm going to go to mission type. This is the type of missions. You want to have more counter air, you want to have less air interdictions, or do you want to have more strategic strikes? You just adjust those accordingly as you want. These packs are just areas of priorities, so you want to have this priority more. You just increase the scale of the priority of that area. You want to Go over here and decrease that. Just decrease that right there, and it'll decrease that area. The darker the red, the more priority. If you want HQ to, to cover all of this and take care of it all, just click that, and it'll all be automatic. This does not affect whether or not the HQ algorithm creates or does not create missions. Regardless of how this is selected, there will be missions created on both sides. After that, you press OK. If you want to control your aircraft squadron, you can just leave this checked and it'll automatically populate missions on the left side. If you do not want the HQ to create your missions, you uncheck it, and then you press that OK on there, and it'll, it won't create anything on there. See how it says human controlled? So now the squadron is hum human controlled. Go ahead and check it. Close this, and it's planning. Close this here. After you press OK, it'll create missions for you for this squadron, along with everyone else. Remember, this is only for this squadron. If you remove this set as HQ, it'll only affect 36 fighter squadron. Press OK. It's creating missions. Now there's a mission up there. All of these missions are, are for you to choose. You can choose any one you want. There's no reason to create a mission. It's all created for you. All right, listen up. Spade 7 is a bar cap on the border right there. The seed goes way up north. 
You can do that if you want. Go into the briefing. So you have other two aircraft with you, AI strike and an escort, and you're the seed of that flight. So I'm going to fast forward the time so I can give an example of how the dynamic campaign works. So on both sides, the north and the south, there's been flights that have been fragged by HQ. As you can see here, this is for the other side as well. So there's MiGs, there's Sequoias, there's helicopters, AWACS, tankers, and everything being created on both sides. See here that's the F-15 taken off. There's a helicopter there, F-16 there. Unknown aircraft here because there's no way for us to know because of intel. There's symbols popping in and out because there's an aircraft here and it's getting intel of that area, thus giving us the locations of those flights. Right here it spawned as a MiG-19 it seemed like. Slow that down a little bit. There's a large package going up to the north. Some attacking aircraft of this air base or the uh, air defense there getting intercepted by F-16s. The vehicles are moving around. And everything is dynamic. Time is going. And when you're in 2D flying around, all this happens while you're in there as well. So that's what makes every mission different. And I hope this video kind of explains what and how a dynamic campaign works and why is it special and what makes it a good tool to have in Falcon BMS. And I'll see you in the next one.